welcome to a Global Village. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We have a great uh, guest today, uh, Molly uh, Douglas, uh, uh, the Reeb of our county. And also we have Reg Ratke from Medicine Arts College. Both of you come to the Global Village. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Reg, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the um, uh, Medicine Arts College programs and for the 2015 and what's the news of the Medicine Arts College? Okay. Well, um, locally here we have uh, some new trades programs that have started actually this week. We have uh, a first year electrical, we call it pre-employment electrical. It runs on a part-time basis, uh, Tuesday, Thursday evenings and Saturdays and runs now till December. And uh, it's full, actually more than full with 15 people, uh, 15 students and a waiting list. When those students are done that program, they are eligible to write their first year apprenticeship exam and then they are first year apprentices. So that's running here now. We also have, uh, in partnership with Northern Lakes College from in Alberta. They're running a first year apprenticeship program in crane uh, and equipment hoisting operator uh, apprenticeship program. They're here on site now and so that's a first year program and I think they've got about 10 students in that program. And finally we have an introduction to trades program. Uh, they'll be covering uh, electrical, carpentry, welding and plumbing and it runs from August to uh, February and those students uh, will be introduced to those trades they'll receive some other skills and we'll be assisting them with uh, finding uh, employment as well and that's in partnership with Brooks and County Immigration Services and it's funded by Alberta Human Services so those are three uh, interesting programs in the trades area we have going right now so the last one is everybody's qualified or just there's a process they're following? The last one, the end of the trades, is targeted to people who are unemployed or underemployed. Okay. Yeah. So is that the same one that you guys did last time? I think, no. Last year? No, this is the first time we've ran this one for oh, quite a while. So, The other ones are, f are apprenticeship programs and they're for either apprentices or, or people who are looking to change careers and yeah. So. Oh, okay. So this is unemployed or unemployed yeah, people? for that last one. Oh, okay, and that is a grant money from the government? Yes. Okay, no, that's that's uh, very good, I think. People should be taking advantage of the program. Do you have people now enrolling the program or still? Yeah, it started. It's already started this week, and so uh, unfortunately they're full, and yeah, so uh, we're now gearing up and planning for uh, welding, which is coming back in January. Mm -hmm. And uh, another interesting story in the welding area is that we'll be working with uh, four different schools in the area to introduce uh, high school students mm -hmm. and junior high students into the welding program. So starting here in September, we have Brooks Composite High School and Christ uh, St. Joseph's Collegiate coming in, high school students. And then uh, later on, we have the junior high students from the junior high school and from the Jenner School will be coming in mm -hmm. to uh, spend time in our welding lab. So that'll be happening uh, through this winter, starting starting this fall and through the winter. Wow, there you go. I think uh, Maul will be happy to see those uh, small towns outside Brooks uh, gi being given the same opportunity. Thanks uh, very much, uh, Molly. You want to tell us something about the uh, county in general then, and what you guys uh, 2015 uh, looking up to? Sure. Uh, thank you for, for having me here, Ahmed. It's always fun to come and join your global village. You do such a good job. Thank you. And Reg, very interesting uh, information there um, about what's going on at the college. Yes, we're heading into uh, fall. We sort of take try and take a little bit of time off over uh, summer at the, the county, or the counselors do. The staff, of course, can't. But uh, um, I guess probably the biggest thing on everyone's mind is the economic slowdown in, yeah. in Alberta and, and what that is going to mean and uh, so that will that will enter into our discussions. Budget is something that we've already begun looking at for, for the coming year but um, we have been blessed with uh, a very diverse economy in southern Alberta with our, our irrigation and the agriculture that it brings or the uh, abundance that increases in our, our area and tourism season has I think been pretty good this year 
hoping that the smoke lifts to uh, let people breathe a little bit easier and, and we see the sun again. The forest fires have been quite incredible yeah. fallout. And as well, of course, we have our oil and gas industry and a very important industry and going forward, we will be um, watching things unfold with, uh, you know, at the provincial government level and of course the federal election is, is happening right now too. So lots of things at play and the municipal government is a, can be affected by many of those things that are, that are at play. But looking forward to, uh, we're going into our third year of a four year group of us working together and so that's exciting as we get to know one another and, and uh, work together as, as a county and of course as a larger community as well. So the, the um, Alberta government's budget I think is still not yet to be announced. Would that be something that the county and the city municipalities will be awaiting the announcement of that budget or you will be able to have your own budget based on the need from here? Um, certainly provincial funding is, is important to our municipal government and from what we have learned I, I think that the funding that we were expecting for the most part will be in place but you're right the budget is not going to be announced until late October I October, believe. Yeah. So um, there's always implications when governments do budgets. Yeah. Um, we've been working on ours for a number of months and have a pretty good idea of of what we want and uh, you know our we our biggest we provide services and our the biggest thing we've been working on is our regional water and this time next year we're hoping to pretty much have that wound up if everything goes as planned and so that doesn't mean it'll be paid for but uh, the completion of that will be uh, will allow us to to look at other areas of, of growth and things to spend money uh, for our our residents on. There you go. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to be a little bit um, positive that uh, things will be all right. Yes, yes, we yeah. we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, uh, Reg, you were mentioning a while ago uh, that um, college will be the fifth and fifth anniversary uh, this year, 2015. Yes, yeah. For Medicine Ad College, it was established in 1965. And so from September onward, we're in our 25th, an 25th year of operation. Uh, 50th, 50th, uh, 50th <laughs> sorry, 50th as, as a college. So are we talking about Brooks Campus? No, or are we talking no about Medicine Hat College. Brooks Campus uh, actually started delivering here in Brooks in 1979. Oh, okay. And so uh, then uh, a few years later, uh, in this particular campus, this particular building will be 25 years old uh, next September. So the Medicine and College has been offering and operating programming in Brooks since 1979. But Medicine Hat College, the overall college, started in 65, and this is the 50th anniversary. Okay, so this year will be the 50th anniversary, 2015. Yes, 2015, 2016. We we use the whole academic okay, year. Okay. And. Uh, we're we're celebrating. We don't have any. Uh, we have a couple of events, uh, significant events, but throughout the year we're we're focusing on what we call 50 acts of college, and so we'll be doing a number of things in Medicine Hat and other communities, uh, you know, with on that theme of 50. So right now, what's happening? We're handing out 50 backpacks with school supplies to schools. Wow. You know, and we'll be doing those kind of things throughout the year and in other all uh, other small communities too. So stay tuned for whatever those 50 acts of college will be. Wow, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's uh, good information that uh, fifth acts. So we hope uh, they go also outside uh, the county people as well, uh, the, the, the idea. But uh, today is our also first day that uh, Global Village is uh, airing from Global Village in the area of Medicine at College. And, Thank you very much giving us the opportunity to air from within our community rather than from Medicine Hat, which we've been doing in the last many years. So We're very happy to have you here. Uh, we, we appreciate it and uh, we think it's a good idea. We do too. There you go. We're in the county, <laughs> now. There you go. Yeah, I think. Brooks Campus. 
Yeah, I think it's it's good to 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 have uh, now and then um, uh, from Brooks County of New York for the simple fact is it's easier for the community to have a base of, of a studio here. So that's the that's the intent of Global Village is to have a voice from within, airing from our community Brooks and County of, of New York. Still keep uh, going to Medicine Hat uh, Studio now and then but also have an alternative back and forth from here. So it will be easier to invite from our county people and Brooks people to the college. That's it's great. easier than driving all the way to, to Medicine Hat. Uh, one thing that I think everyone talks about uh, Mali is uh, the two municipalities, uh, uh, Brooks municipality and the county municipality are a very good model for the rest of either Alberta or other municipalities because of the working relations that you guys built it up for many years. So how did that happen? Um, everything in life is about people or money, I think, or people and money. There you go. And so it's probably about people and money. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get the right people in place who have share similar thoughts, I guess. And um, I have been, this is my 11th, just completing my 11th year on county council and a number of the councillors who started with me and who and also the city of brooks councillors at the time had the same sort of ideas about the uh, the ability to accomplish much more when we work together mm -hmm. and that our communities are shared um, the county of newell and the city of brooks don't have boundaries they we don't need a passport to move between them yeah. and we we uh we help out each other with our, our, the different things we provide. I mean, people come and get their mail in Brooks or Bazano or, or Duchess or Rosemary. Those are, you know, other municipalities as well. And we have stores in those communities like there are in, in Brooks and schools. And, and so people come from the county, obviously, to share those services or to use those services. And on the other hand, our urbans, whether they're the city of Brooks or the, the villages, the smallest of our urban communities, depend on rural people to come in to spend their money and to use those services. And so it just makes sense. It's just good logic that we would work together to provide the best services we can for all of our people, regardless of what municipality they live in. So that has become our, our sort of uh, motto and uh, we, uh, we have tried to do that as much as possible. We have a joint services committee that has been expanded to include you know, the Eastern Irrigation District and some of the school districts and um, other, other organizations that would be interested in, in trying to work with us. And um, yeah, we, uh, you know, all levels of government serve the same group of people and so we need to we need to be cognizant of that and use our, our time and money as efficiently as we can. So, and I think we, you know, there's lots of communities have started to figure that out. So. No, you, you guys did uh, very well of uh, working relationship, uh, especially uh, having a um, county uh, and, and cities always don't have that much good relationship compared to other places. That's human nature. But uh, you guys did a very good model, which the rest of Alberta or Canada can probably be able to see it as a model. Uh, would, would you say that um, you've been a principal school, high school? Uh, Martin was a principal. Mm -hmm. uh, so would that is also, you think, was contributing factors since you both knew each other long mm -hmm. before? Sure, sure. Our, our, uh we did know each other and, and we did have a past um, uh, shared relationship mm -hmm. within the school system and, yeah. and uh, sure it helped. But it takes more than two people, it takes a, a lot. The whole team. The whole team. And uh, you know, to, I hope that we don't lose that feeling, that relationship that it's, it's good to, to share, it's good to cooperate and communicate. Communication is the toughest job that any of us have. And so often people, I mean, we all know that from our personal relationships that communication sometimes is, doesn't work very well. And, and so we can't ever 
you know, when I try not to react in a uh, negative way when I hear something about what the city's doing or what the town of Bazano thinks, you know, it's like, well, let's just continue to, to work together and figure it out and make sure that, that we have the facts in place because there's always lots of rumors and innuendo out there that uh, people need to remember, get the facts. And so, um, you know, you get the right people in place and get the right goals, I think uh, it's not that hard. So in, in other words, what's good for Bassan is good for uh, Brooks, what's good for uh, Tilly is good for uh, Dutchess or other county Absolutely. places, which is, which is good. Yeah, uh, Reg, uh, you want to also touch base with the, 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 uh, the program that you used to have, uh, the one-year transition to university, for example, if a kid graduates from high school, uh, then they will be given an opportunity of one year here. Uh, before they proceed to university. So that kid probably will have a year with the family still. Is that mm -hmm. uh, the case still or? Well, sort of, okay. uh, or partly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. For whatever reason, we didn't have a very good enrollment in that program, so it was suspended. Uh, this year we offered uh, eight university courses uh, six of those through distance, through Skype and through video conferencing, yeah. and two in person. And again, unfortunately, we didn't have much enrollment in those courses. So maybe it was promotion, maybe it's uh, community memory, <laughs> but we're re rethinking and, and gonna take another look at that. We still think there is a, a market here, a, a need or demand, for uh, some people who want to take that first year university course here. Yeah. And so we're still working on that. So uh, I hope we have some more news on that in a, in a few months. We're, we're still looking at it. Okay, and you still have that relationship with the University of Calgary or University of the... Um... Yeah, we, we have with uh, different universities okay. uh, at Medicine Hat College, students can complete uh, five different degrees at the Medicine Hat campus in cooperation with University of Lethbridge, University of Calgary, Mount Royal University, Athabasca University, so. Wow, wow. So that's something can be probably come back again to the yeah. college. So yeah, so we're, we're working on it. Uh, Stay it, tuned. It, we have to, certainly we have to get the message out to people, but okay. uh, people also have to enroll, have to want it. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're working on that. And well, I think, uh, and, and it's uh, uh, as Molly is here, I think it's extremely important for the community to have uh, the community college stays for a long time, uh, for many years to come, for the benefit of all communities, as you know very well. Uh, education is extremely important for the uh, kids, uh, if for the next generations, if we want to compete with other cities, other counties, other countries. So the college is extremely vital for the uh, for the community and, Absolutely. and I think we should need to promote that through the high school and others I think and business well in, in town. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're, we're working uh, on, on things uh, for example I can tell you today that we just made a commitment to offer the health care aid courses in Bazano, that's Bazano school. Wow. Uh, it'll be a course at a time, it'll be evening delivery, it'll be open to high school students and to the general public. But so we're trying to to put those out now. That won't be you know we won't that won't, may not be every year, but we're you know we'll offer one so they can complete that that program there, and uh, then we may you know look at other communities. But as an example, and we're working with the school district slowly to do uh, uh, something in the area of dual credit and, and offering a university course in in the high schools. So. Wow, that's that's that is uh, very good. Did uh, Jim has a uh, school? Jem has a grade one to six school oh. still. It's the, the smallest and probably, well, it is the most remote school in, in Grasslands okay. area. And uh, their enrollment isn't really big, but they've been able to carry on and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that. But we don't have a high school outside Brooks then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Bazano is a K to 12 school. Rosemary and Duchess are K-12 schools. Wow. And uh, Tilly used to have se a senior high, but they have, they uh, shut it down a number of years ago, just maybe four or five, six mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. um, because of numbers. Okay. And uh, the, the senior high struggle 
in a way to survive and to have enough offerings of courses. That's tough. Um, you know, I think when you have my experience with a K to 12 school is the, the 10, 11, and 12 areas take quite a bit of financial support from the rest of the school yeah. to be able to offer the, the choice that students want. Um, so anything that, you know, the college or other schools can work in together is, is important. And our school system has tried to, to work together and share courses. And I know Duchess and Rosemary over the years have, have uh, gone back and forth, the kids, uh, for certain courses. Yeah. But if, if any members of your audience are listening or watching yeah. and uh, they're considering yeah. moving to Bazano or Duchess or Rosemary, they have strong high school programs there. Yes. So. Wow. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's Burke's really Composite is, is by far the largest. Yeah. And, and, and Christ the Redeemer system, their, their schools have grown also. Yeah. So yeah. they now offer, of course, they have a senior high as well. Yeah. But uh, there's always advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons to the small yeah. versus the large. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in our small towns, you know, if you're uh, in senior high or uh, you want to play basketball or volleyball, you probably can always get on a team if you're determined to, yeah. you know, things like that, yeah. or if you want to be a, in the drama club. But, um, yeah, sometimes course offerings are harder to to get. No, we are blessed, I think, uh, uh, and, and the reason I'm saying is because, not because I have known you for a long time, but the fact that um, you were a, uh, a school principal, so you know the importance of education to the generation. And that is what we need is because if you lack or you're behind of education, then you will be behind for any other factors in life. That is the bottom line. Uh, so education is the, the major important fact of a generation of the kid or the youth to succeed in life. It's partial, so. And it's always been that the generation behind us always wants us to become better mm -hmm. and education certainly I grew up in that that concept of yeah. getting an education will will allow you that that freedom yeah so it's mm -hmm. still a you know my dad always said uh, if you could read well you really can educate yourself and still so I still think that you know reading is such a critical skill so no, that is that is was a wise thing to say from your dad, and yes. that's true indeed. Uh, you want to just uh, touch base of the Reeve, what does Reeve stand for, for example? Sure. The Reeve is just like a mayor, okay. another name for a mayor, and so I am like the mayor of the county of Newell, which is the rural area, and we have a number of hamlets within that, like Jem and Patricia, Rolling Hills and Bow City and Scandia. There's, there's lots of hamlets, and they are... They are part of the county of Newell. They do not have their own municipal government. Representatives from those areas sit around our table at the county of Newell, as opposed to Bazano, Duchess, Rosemary. Others, those are the little communities, but they have their own government. And Tilly used to, the village of Tilly um, dis John, John decided. John Timco. Yes, became a, a hamlet, I think it's two years ago now. Yeah. So they are under the, the governance of the, the county. He is the mayor of Ford now. Yes, John Tim Cole, the there, you mayor. Go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the, the, the last <coughs> one is, Rachel, you want to touch, just touch base quickly with the ESL programs you have as well for the immigrants yeah. because no, English have, is not yeah. the first language. We have a, a, a strong uh, English as a second language or English language learning program here. Yeah. Uh, last year we had about 110 students uh, part-time. Some of those students are uh, come in classes during the day and some come during the evening classes. So we have both evening and daytime classes running uh, Monday through uh, Friday, uh, th through Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. So this year we expect the in interest is, is uh, we expect our enrollment to increase and actually uh, we've just received word that we're going to get funding for another class, a higher level. That's so uh, that's through mm -hmm. Canadian government funding and uh, so it will be expanding. So, uh, yeah, if anyone's interested in, in improving their English language, please come and talk to us. Okay. And we also, uh, we also have a complete uh, upgrading courses offering here, so in terms of getting ready to enter into college programs to meet the entrance requirements. 
that that is uh, well said, and I think uh, the the uh, br the presentation that they asked me to do at the Lethbridge, I think uh, I have accepted, and we'll be going to do that presentation at uh, Lethbridge. I believe that's the um, uh, the. Southern Alberta this Language Assessment Services. Yeah, uh, on, 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 mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. So they asked me to do a presentation based off the um, uh, cultural work uh, ethics and, and diversity in general. And You're just becoming more and more famous. Uh, no, I'm trying to be. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. Uh, no. and, and it's important for others to know that we live a very great community and yes. we uh, need others to know that how we do our business so others can model what we do here so they can run with it. But I thank you very much for both of you to come to Global Village and it's a great honor to have you Molly for your time as well as Reg. And again thank you very much for Reg for giving us the opportunity to film the program okay. from within the community. Brooks and Kant of New York it's the first time and I hope it will be for many times to come in the near future. Thank you very much Molly. Thank you Thank for you all very the good work you do. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank, Thank you very you. much. This is the end of the program, Global Village. This is your host, Ahmed Kasim. This is where the East meets with the West, and today we are honored to be uh, airing this program from Medicine Art College, Brooks Camps, in Brooks County of New York. Until then, God bless everyone.